some time ago I found these old hand planes on internet and uh, they was pretty cheap they cost me about next to nothing so I buy them um, they are as you can see they are pretty bad shape they are really rusty I don't know they are maybe stored in some outside garage or I don't know where but but right now they are not in use of uh, in condition that they can be used so I will try to restore those and see what they came up this uh, four is original stainless made by Bailey and there is a logo over there but this uh, number five is uh, hard to say uh, I didn't find anywhere right yet the manufacturer logo and because we are in Finland this also can be Swedish copy I, I think so it's uh, called Elmo but I'm not sure let's see if there is some mark of manufacturer underneath of this rust first I'm going to start by taking off all the parts and uh, uh, the handles because they are broken in both of these and uh, the front knobs are okay but I do new handles for these but let's take them apart first we can take this apart uh, much of rust and wood chips and other derbies but, but uh, other way this looks pretty okay I don't know do this go even bad if they don't paint but I don't know how you can paint one of these or yeah probably you can but then you are doing something else than hand playing okay. Okay, so these are all the metal pieces that came out of these two planes. Uh, next I'm going to go through them with the fire brush and uh, just trying to take off the loose rust and biggest of the other contamination that this has. And after that I'm going to soak them in vinegar and hope that it makes some kind of miracle and restore these. <laughs> most of the way let's see Both of these are actually these um, kind of scar bottoms. I don't know what is the uh, actual word for that, but uh, I have read somewhere that this design was idea to uh, minimize the um, 
like a friction between the piece that has been uh, planed down and the plane so it will be uh, moving more nicely but I don't know does this make any difference at all but well never use one of these so <laughs> I don't know let's see The one that I know it for sure Stainley and uh, made by Baileys and it looks way much better than this other one that I don't know maybe some kind of uh, quality difference here but also I don't know for age of these so the number four can be much newer than the number five I don't know but there are definitely some difference example this keyhole um, shapes it is totally different between these two I don't know should the number 5 has a different kind of keyhole shape than number 4 I don't think so but well doesn't make a difference here Next I need to dump them in here and submerge these in vinegar and hope that it makes some kind of miracle for this. Uh, well, this, yeah they fit like this, okay. they need to soak in there like 24 hours so I'm gonna leave the camera here and come to next day and see what is going on Okay, it has been now about 24 hours since I put them in here, so let's take a look and see what has been happened. If nothing else, the smell is pretty amazing, if so could say. The vinegar make much of bubbles in that time uh, well the rust is pretty loose in this one at least I have steel wool uh, and just let's see by rubbing it with this and then rise it in 
here. Okay. Pretty good actually, I think. Most of the rust come right off and without too much of elbow grease. So um, I go into then do all of these and let's see what they going to look about. Okay, well, I think so. This is going to be pretty good. This also. And, well, not so bad actually even to do. Uh, let's say to make this clean takes less than a minute. So, well, maybe I will do all of these parts, but not so bad. Okay, so after that I clean up these with vinegar, I wash them off with just soap and water and most of the rust came off just nicely. Those little what was left after the vinegar wash. But um, then I bring them here to dry and they got some uh, rust back. Uh, I guess it the uh, moisture that has been left after the wash but this is just uh, just on the surface so next I'm going to go this through with the WD-40 and uh, just wipe this um, little bit of rust off and then coat it with uh, oil so it doesn't do it again um, I think so it works I try a little piece right here this side is uh, um, go through with the oil and this side is not I don't know is this visible on camera but this side is much cleaner than the other side I think so uh, in the bottom of the sole we will see it more clearly but uh, let's start Okay, uh, now the all parts are been gone through with the oil and they are not perfect. They are definitely, you can see that they are old and used, but I think so they are much in better shape than what we start with. And I think so that they are gonna be uh, just fine for working and uh, not maybe a show pieces, but functional tools. Uh, next I'm going to assemble these back and start uh, making the handles. But uh, one thing that I need to say in this uh, moment is that the Stanley is definitely made better. Uh, I don't know is it uh, much different from the designing but the materials are much better. Um, uh, example these parts this is 
Alto, uh, which doesn't have any name or brand anywhere in these pieces. And then we are here. We have uh, one that is for Stanley. It's a uh, much cleaner and much in much more in better shape. It also can be uh, something how this has been stored, but this is similar in all pieces. All Stanley pieces are in better shape than the others in number four, uh, number five. I mean, but uh, after and I think so they both gonna work pretty same. Okay, next I'm going to make new handles for the planes because the old ones are broken and uh, I found this piece of uh, elm and I'm going to make it from this it's thick enough for the handles and next I'm going to just roughly drop these in here and then cut it to the approximately the right size and then hand, hand carve these to the rest of the way or that's the plan let's see how it goes been cut them to the roughly right shape with some pretty nasty looking um, sewing with the zigzag but uh, and after that I uh, saw them in real thickness and that was a mistake it would be much easier to do just with the board and then cut the right side uh, shape and not in this direction but it went okay but not maybe the safest way to do it well it didn't turn out just the way i like it and i think that i could easily hand carve these uh, from this to more like this but um well it was much more difficult than what i was thinking about uh, mostly because it has a little bit so tight corners and with the knife it's just a little bit difficult uh, the one I did came out like this but uh, at the last point I go through it with uh, a router and trim the edges off and it came out look much better so I think that the next one I'm going to go a little bit different I first going to mark out more exactly where the line is and then cut out it much more closer to that and much more clearer than this and then go with the router only and let's see what that's gonna look like Now when I attached the six saw to the table it was much more easier to clean up this more uh, precise and uh, next I'm going to use a router to take out the corners and uh, I think so that the safest way is to use double sided tape and just tape it to the table and then route it and then flip it around.
well this one what I did last one is much better looking um, it was stupid idea to try to hand carve this out because this was much quicker and much cleaner looking piece um, only places where it doesn't go perfectly is this corner here and this and that but those can be easily be just cleaned out by some sanding this one has much more of that <laughs> next I'm going to make uh, holes through here where the shaft of the plane should go and then some sanding and oiling and then putting this back Next I'm going to clean up these front knobs and um, I don't have a lathe so I'm not going to do these new ones but I want to clean these up and coating these new so I figured out it was easiest to do just uh, find out a drill bit what was a little bit bigger than the hole inside and just by hand turn it tight in there and use some pliers to help not all the way in but that much that the drill bit grabs on nicely for the knob a little bit like this and then use a drill just like this and then we can use just sandpaper and the drill for a cleanup So the knobs turn out to be pretty nice. I clean them up with the chant paper and also the handles. Next I'm going to apply some just regular cooking oil to these and then we can assemble this. For adding the oil I simply just wipe this up. Let's hope so that the color of these knobs match even slightly for the handles handles are going to turn pretty dark with the oil because they are elm but i don't know exactly what kind of wood these knobs are i think so this could be maybe birch but not sure In Finland we don't have walnut, so I think so elm is looking kind of the same. I think so it looks pretty nice. The next I'm going to wipe off the excess oil. What is left in this? I'm using just the regular paper towels to do it. This treatment is not maybe the most durable but it's pretty easy to apply again and pretty goddamn cheap. Now we can start assembling these back on and 
let's hope so they all go nicely in the place So, there they are, not a showpiece like I said earlier, but I think so they look pretty nice to work on the Korat shop. And even the more rustier number 5 turned out to be pretty okay. Some rust is still here, but it's fine for me at least. Next I'm going to take the plates and sharpen these up. Maybe check if the soles are flat, but I don't film it. I leave it to someone who is more professional to doing it that because, well, I think so there might be a thousand more, more capable people to show it how it's done probably than me. But hey, thanks for watching. Let's see what we do next time.